Hey everyone, this is Brant from Wolf on Wall Street Trade with a market update for the week ending June 28th, 2019. So this uh, is going to be a short video because quite frankly, there's nothing that I can say that's going to matter in the next 24 to 48 hours as we hear what the results are from the G20 and the talks between President Trump and President Xi of China regarding uh, the trade war tariffs, all that. But we can get some perspective and there are some interesting things to point out. So we just had, uh, this is the month of June, this is a weekly chart, S&P 500, uh, the four weeks here. The month of June is the best June since 1938. This was the worst December since the Great Depression. Do you ever wonder why we're getting these kinds of crazy stats, best this since then, worst this since then? Well, I humbly submit to you, this is the reason why. You see these huge swings? broadening top. I've been talking about this, talked about it in last week's video. So from the last, or not the last, but the record high in January 2018, right here, the S&P as of this week, as of this close, is 2.4% higher over the last 17 months. So we've had some crazy major volatility, but guess what? Market hasn't gone anywhere in 17 months, just chopping around like crazy. That is very typical of tops and bottoms, actually. It depends on what the preceding trend was. So as we said last week, what does a broadening top represent? Represents a market that lacks intelligent sponsorship. It represents a market that is whipped around by wild rumors or news. Okay, so let's zoom back in and look at the week. Okay, still weekly candles. Here is the May decline when trade wars ramped up. Here's the month of June. So this specifically is where most of the gains came from. And more specifically on June 4th. So this huge candle is uh, that week. That was the week, actually the day, June 4th, that Jerome Powell, the Fed chief or the Fed chairman, went dovish. Okay, and this is what I was saying last week. The market made an all-time new high just above this April one. And what I was saying was, you know, the Fed said the exact same thing that Jerome Powell said on June 4th. So the market has basically discounted in what he said on June 4th, all the dovishness, and the FOMC just confirmed that. So if we look at a daily chart, I was saying last week that I don't think this high is going to hold very long. It doesn't look very durable. And that's what happened this week. It came down. So uh, let me go back to that weekly chart. In essence, we have a big week up here. We have a consolidation week before the FOMC, which is here, the knee jerk reaction, the new high. And we have another consolidation week here before the G20. So consolidation week generally means going sideways, pausing, consolidating, but it was a volatile week. So if you had bought uh, this new high on the words record new high, then you probably had a really scary Monday and Tuesday over here, especially for small caps. So I'm going to throw up a 15 minute chart. And just to familiarize you with it, this is the end of the May decline. This is early June discounting the Powell rate cut. This is the pause or the consolidation week before the FOMC. Here's the FOMC barely moved the next day, the new high. And here is the beginning of this week. So SPY came down to the top of this consolidation range. Not a big deal, not a big problem. Uh, the Dow stayed above it. QQQ stayed above it over here, came down. IWM in the beginning of the week broke all the way through it and came right down to the bottom. So this was really scary trade at the beginning of the week. Really the sectors that were being hit were growth sensitive sectors like uh, the Dow Jones transport. So I'll pull them up real quick. So here they are, and this is kind of a, a resistance area here, about 10,450. This is the consolidation before the Fed. Here's the Fed. Here's this week. Even had like a little bear flag there in uh, midweek and then recovered. So this is part of why uh, small caps did so well at the end of the week. Let me pull them up again. As you can see, real ugly here, real strong here. On the week, the S&P was up. I'm sorry, the S&P was down a third of a percent. The NASDAQ was down three quarters of a percent, the Dow almost half a percent, but the IWM small caps were up 1%. So relative strength in small caps, that means something. Small caps tend to lead the broader market. Most S&P sectors did very little. The ones that were up financials, that's because of the Fed's uh, bank stress test. And the other one was materials. Everything else pretty much did next to nothing except the defensive sectors. So uh, consumer staples, utilities, uh, real estate, and even healthcare, which is defensively oriented, not quite as defensive and rate sensitive as the other three, they were all down pretty hard. So for the most part, it looked like the market pretty much had another consolidation week. 
and I'll pull up the SPY consolidation week. Here's the FOMC consolidation week. But looking at the sectors alone, there was a bias towards the end of the week towards uh, very high beta growth sensitive sectors like transport, semiconductors, uh, biotechs, regional banks, and that's why you see the relative strength in small caps. Now, another reason is there was a massive short squeeze this week. I'm going to show it to you. So this is a one minute chart of the S&P and the candlesticks. And this white line is my most shorted index. This is the new high back here. This is coming into this week. So you can see the shorts were really pressing the market on Monday. And then here on Tuesday, I'm sorry, on Thursday and Friday, massive squeeze. So they're pressing the market short, massive squeeze. And the beneficiary of that squeeze was none other than small caps. Here's IWM. There it is. So interesting factoid, does it matter? I don't know, small caps outperformed. To me, um, the quality of the move kind of matters and shorts getting squeezed, buying to cover is not the same thing as a buyer holding with conviction. They get in there, they cover, they're out. You know, they're done. A uh, buyer with conviction buys and they hold. So uh, to me, it's a little less quality, but I don't really think it matters that much. Just telling you what it was about. Okay, so let's move on to some other asset classes because this is where it gets more interesting. Stocks are right off their all-time new high. They're not really that worried about the G20 because they're not selling off, right? So they're ready to go if there's good news from the G20. Guess what else is? And this is where it gets interesting because very contrasting opinions out there. Let's pull up TLT. Okay, I'm going to have to give you some context here. Let's move out a little bit. Here's this trend. We traded this, bought it right here, traded up uh, somewhere in here. And here was another consolidation right before the FOMC. And this is the FOMC knee jerk. This was not a strong breakout. It was not a solid breakout. Instead, what it did the next week or so was consolidated again in another tiny little or small uh, symmetrical triangle, just like this one. So we ended the week on this five minute chart right here at the top of that consolidation with something that looks like a little uh, bullish flag. It's not really, it just says that treasuries are ready to go from whatever comes out of this G20. So stocks are optimistic. The bond guys, not so much. They're leaning the other way. Gold, I talked about gold last week. Pull up GLD and let me zoom out a little bit more. So here was the really big consolidation that I loved and we bought it uh, right here as it was breaking out and it made this first move and this was the second uh, leg that we were anticipating. This was my upside target that was made way back in here and that upside target was 133.15. Gold went a little bit above that up into the 135 region and look where it closed, 133.20 at the end of the week. So um, really this is consolidating too. It hasn't done anything wrong. If we look at it a little bit closer, this is five minute chart on the week over here. Here's that new high that it made um, and it just pulled back here. We did see some support on 3C charts right here, and that is just about 1400 for gold, gold futures. So you have stocks ready to go. You have bonds ready to go for different reasons. Okay, stocks are optimistic, bonds less so, and then you have gold ready to go. So gold uh, can act as a safe haven. It can also uh, be affected by the dollar, which is sitting in this trend, long time trend, this massive uptrend from 2018 and it's sitting right here at the bottom now it could break and if it does that will be a whole different scenario for the entire market but it's not ready to break yet until it hears the news that's a massive uptrend and if you look at like uh, the euro against the US dollar what you see is the same thing a downtrend while the dollar was going up and it is sitting right above uh, this downtrend and has been consolidating in this teeny teeny range this week just waiting on what comes out of the FOMC. So everything is ready to move for all kinds of different reasons, a lot of different opinions in the market, and the fact is nobody knows. You may not believe this, but even volatility. This is a two minute chart of the S&P. Here's that pre-FOMC consolidation, the FOMC knee jerk, the S&P high, and this week the G20 consolidation. Down here in the bottom window is volatility's term structure. And when you see arrows like this, these white bars, uh, it's flattening, okay? So that means it's you're seeing buyers get more aggressive in immediate front month protection in VIX futures. That means they're getting more nervous. So you saw that right into the start of this FOMC consolidation. Then they dumped all the hedges. I mean, just dropped them like a rock right at 2 p.m. on the FOMC last week. 
And since then, coming back into this consolidation range, they have pumped up again. So they're hedging and really strongly. Actually, this is even more hedging than it was back here before the FOMC. So people are nervous. You can pull this up for yourself and dig through it, but I'm just going to highlight it real quick. This is the S&P here in the candlesticks, and this is VIX here in blue. Kind of a normal relation over here before here coming into the pre fomc consolidation vic sees some relative weakness over here this is where those volatility hedges were dumped right on the fomc this is relative strength ever since then so from like the 14th over here i think the s p is up something like two percent so is vix so we've got stocks ready to go they're looking for good news from the g20 we've got bonds they're ready to go in case there's bad news from the G20. And we have gold, which is pretty much similar to bonds in this case, as well as currency. And we've got VIX, our volatility, forward leaning and hedged up. So a lot of uncertainty, a lot of different opinions. Me, myself, I'm just going to sit and wait it out, you know, let everybody else get chopped up to pieces. Then we'll see how the market starts reacting because there's a lot of different knock on effects. Uh, what happens at the G20 if there's good results and you know maybe they don't hit the tariffs and they start uh, talking again guess what those July rate cut odds that the market priced in over here those will be gone so it's another situation where good news is probably going to be bad news and bad news is probably going to be good news you also have that initial knee-jerk reaction just like we saw at the FOMC here often gets faded market has to think about this a little bit and we did have a G20 meeting last year in December with almost this exact same scenario. Tariffs were about to go up on China. President Trump and President Xi met at uh, the G20 in Argentina. It was right between these two days. So there were good results. No tariffs went up and they started talking until April, right? So the market gapped up on the next day. That was it. Sold off into December. So you don't really know what you're going to get. And in this one, there's a lot of uh, variables. One last thing for my crew using 3C, I want to show you something interesting that happened at the end of today uh, in S&P futures. This is a one minute chart of S&P futures, okay, ES. And this is about 3.30, near the close. So this is the cash open, market uh, comes down, rallies back up, and then starts leaking down in the afternoon. Nothing looks good about this price action. It's down. Uh, consolidate down consolidate down consolidate so here's something wicked that was going on in 3c let me put it up look at that a huge positive divergence as price is going down it's saying they're buying they're buying and this is what happens next this is crazy and uh, you can look at the volume closer and you'll see why this is what 3c is good at doing here we are closer to the close and boom there it is So here's volume of ES. I backed it up a little bit so the uh, closing bars that are huge don't skew what was going on here. It not only takes price into account, but also volume. And not just what's happening right now, but how it compares to a number of bars ago. So if you look at you know the sell-off here, you see little red spikes You know as it comes down, little red spikes. Right here, right where 3C starts to go positively divergent, big volume spike here. And if you just focus your eyes on the green volume, you can see that green volume sloping higher from in here to in here. That's what 3C is picking up on. And even though there's red bars in there, it's taking all of that into consideration versus X bars ago. So anyway, I thought I'd point that out. Uh, one of the more unique, interesting signals that you'll sometimes see. And actually, you know what this was? It was a market on a close order, $4 billion being executed. And that eventually led to price doing that. So I hope that's uh, pretty succinct. There are a lot of different scenarios and it just depends really on how that language is fine tuned. And then there's always that possibility of the whole buy uh, the rumor, sell the news like we saw last year. So I'm going to leave it off there. Have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, I suspect that next week is going to be insane.